All right, we're back again this year for the 2023 legislative session. I am Nate Krippis, and this is Andrew Riggle, and this will be the DLC's policy corner. So this is our preview episode of what's coming up this session. So here's what's coming up and what's going down. Yeah, so uh, the big difference this year is that uh, most of um, most of what happens will be back in person, um, which uh, which means that um, as usual, uh, budget uh, budget committees for the first couple of week, couple of weeks of the session will happen in the morning. Um, uh, standing committees or or committees that uh, consider bills or changes to law will mostly will mostly happen in the afternoon. Um, we um, the other thing to know is that while uh, most of most of us will be in uh, in person, there will still be a virtual uh, a virtual option for those of you who, like uh, Nate and me who uh, have trouble getting up to Capitol Hill by 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, but still want to uh, be able to participate in the process and share your um, and share your thoughts with the with the various committees. So uh, fret no more about that. Um, lastly, I wanted to remind you that of course, um, on the DLC's public policy page, we will again have our uh, bill and budget trackers, our calendar of upcoming, of upcoming committee meetings and um, uh, and collection of policy cor policy corner videos, all the all that good stuff, so you can keep track of what's going on, uh, what's going on in the session, and make sure that you're able to uh, let your uh, let your legislators know what you think about it. First things first, we're going to get to the the governor's recommended budget, and as you recall, every year the governor releases his budget, which is just the recommendations from. Um, his office and the executive agencies, um, and uh, you know, they, they, it's it's really what the executive agencies can uh, speak to during the session, what they can advocate for, what's in the governor's budget. Uh, but ultimately, um, the legislature is going to uh, look at it, decide what it is they're um, going to going to fund or not fund, and uh, doesn't you know, just recommendations from the governor. Um, but first and foremost, um, so uh, the the general fund is where most of the money for disability programs come from. Uh, and there's about uh, 758 million dollars in new money, which could support uh, ongoing services. Similarly, there's around 699 million dollars in one-time money, uh, which is good for things you don't have to pay for once, like uh, buildings. Uh, the governor, the governor is also asking for one billion in tax cuts, some of which uh, will go to lower-income Utahns in the form of rebates or changes to the taxpayer tax credit. The governor also supports additional mental health crisis receiving centers and mobile crisis outreach teams, uh, especially, especially in areas off the Wasatch Front. Um, he also wants to fund telehealth services for school-based mental health. Uh, similar to what's available for folks covered by the Affordable Care Act, the governor suggests uh, create, um, covering a an annual physical for all Medicaid enrollees. Uh, and the, the governor also recommends transferring responsibility for health care at the prison to the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, something we're still learning more about, and we'll, we'll update you on as we learn more. Uh, along those lines, the, uh, govern the governor proposes um, remodeling juvenile justice facilities in West Valley, Provo, and Cache, and Cedar City uh, to be more trauma-informed and focused on rehabilitation. Something we'll actually get a little more, so a little uh, little foreshadowing for the bills section, um, but the, the governor wants to provide uh, DSPD services to 258 people. Uh, he also wants to continue the caregiver compensation program and pilot a respite and supported living program. The governor is requesting $100 million for deeply affordable housing, as well as $9 million in low-income tax credits and $15 million uh, in funding uh, for loans to help build additional affordable housing. Uh, the governor also suggests a pilot program making UTA free. As you all might have, uh, as you all might have guessed uh, by now, we uh, we are starting to see a few bills roll out. Um, obviously, we will um, see many more over the course of the next uh, seven or so weeks. Um, 
that's something for all of us to look forward to. Um, but for the moment, we do know we do know of a couple um, that are out there that we wanted to uh, share with you because we'll uh, you might be interested in them, and we will definitely be uh, working on them and or following them during the session. And the first one is uh, a bill from Representative Wilcox uh, that um, uh, established would establish um, uh, standards for school resource officers and also uh, consistent training requirements for those same officers, which we um, uh, which we think is a good thing. Um, we haven't had consistency in those in those areas, and um, that would be good. Um, a concern that uh, a concern that we have uh, that we have with it is that the bill would also require an SRO to be in every public middle and high school. Um, I think we've uh, I think we've shared this with you in years past, but, but the reason uh, this gives us pause is um, that students with disabilities make up around twelve percent of the student population, but make up a make up a quarter of those of students arrested. Also, youth with disabilities make up about seventy percent of those in, those who find themselves in the juvenile justice system, and uh, we so we have uh, concerns about uh, increasing the offer the opportunities for contact between law enforcement and students with disabilities. But we will be having conversations with representative uh, with representative Wilcox and expressing that concern and seeing if there are uh, things we can do to uh, work our way through that. Two more bills that um, are already out there um, are something we've talked about in uh, the previous couple of sessions. Um, so we have uh, HB 37 and HB 162, uh, one from Representative Ellison, one from Representative Quinn. Um, we saw these bills last year. They're related to uh, signature match uh, voter uh, signatures. Um, it really just allows um, for a voter with a disability um, to uh, let an election official know that their signature doesn't match because of a disability so that they can, uh, you know, have that on file. And then um, if, there, if there's a signature verification issue every year, um, they just know that they don't need to hassle that individual every year that their signature just doesn't match for a valid reason. Um, you know, we view this as something akin to uh, a reasonable accommodation under uh, Title II of the ADA. So, um, you know, we're going to be supporting both of those. Not sure which one's going to be moving forward. Um, they're fairly similar, um, but um, we'll keep an eye on both of those and let you know, but we'll be supporting both of those bills. Anticipate a um, a number of bills related to, men, related to mental health uh, to come out during the session, but a couple of them are available now. So um, we can uh, walk you through uh, some of those. The first one, uh, the first one is um, a bill from uh, Representative Stoddard, currently titled Law Enforcement Co-Response. Uh, Co Co and this is a bill that uh, this is a bill that we've been working with him on. It uh, it would create a grant uh, program to fund um, more uh, mobile crisis outreach teams and uh crisis intervention team and crisis intervention teams that are uh, that are focused on uh that are focused on law enforcement um we um we, we like that the we like that the bill establishes criteria for um when a uh when law enforcement uh should when law enforcement should respond to an in, individual in need of Help and when a uh, and when a mental health um, uh, focused team should respond to a person in uh, to a person experiencing crisis. Ultimately, our goal is to uh, reduce the um, reduce the number of um, the number of unnecessary responses, unnecessary law enforcement responses to 
uh, to mental health crises and reduce uh, the chance the chances of a uh, negative outcome from contact with law enforcement. So yeah, as Andrew mentioned, um, I think we anticipate a lot of bills around uh, mental health this year. Um, you know, last year obviously there was the the bill that um, expanded some involuntary commitment stuff that we had concerns about, and we anticipate some uh, potentially some similar bills this year. Um, one that we're watching right now is from Representative Burton, um, which would um, prohibit um, a, an individual from having or or would allow a, a mental health facility in a secure area, uh, prohibit a person from having. Um, a communication device, some type of cell phone or something along those lines. Um, you know, we have some concern with that. Um, obviously, it's important. Communication is important. Um, and just allowing them to prohibit it without, um, you know, looking at the specifics of an individual situation um, gives us concern. Um, something we are looking at, probably not this year, but in future years, is um, looking at a uh, a bill of rights uh, for individuals who are uh, involuntarily committed um, and looking at ways that we could make sure that they have some rights, um, protections for them um, when that when that situation arises. So um, we're going to be watching this bill from Representative Burton. We have some concerns, um, but, uh, you know, like I said, there could be some others we'll be uh, keeping an eye out for. So uh, finally, in terms of the thing, in terms of the things we know, um, Representative, Representative Jenkins uh, has a um, has a bill that we've uh, that we've been working with her on, uh, titled uh, "Mental Health Treatment Study," and um, this bill will um, will look at um, the needs and the needs and gaps um, in the mental health system and recommendations for uh, for filling those gaps over the next. Uh, over the next several years to a to a decade, it uh, will, if successful, it will uh, specifically focus on uh, individuals with uh, serious with serious mental illness. Um, some of you may have um, some of you have may have heard that um, the hospital association and the Kim Gardner Institute at the University of Utah are working on a. Uh, a mental health uh, a mental health master plan of their own. We have been in conversation with both uh, Kim Gardner and UHA, um, and we have uh, great hope that uh, that Representative Jetkin's study will work uh, will work well together with the ma with the master plan um, and com and complement one another. We also know. Uh, we also know that she um, is. We don't know. We don't know the details yet, but we know that Representative Jenkins is working on a um, on a proposal to provide um, additional access to um, additional services to uh, more individuals throughout the state who are ex who experience um, serious who experience uh, serious mental illness. So as we learn more t details about what that may look like, we'll uh, let you know and keep you posted. All right, two uh, things real quick to, to wrap us up on bills. Um, speaking of Representative Judkins, um, we have had conversations with her and we've been working with her on a bill that would um, uh, codify supported decision-making agreements. Um, we, we have not seen a bill. We're not sure um, if it'll come out this year, but we're hopeful. Um, so that's something we'll be keeping an eye out for. And if we see more or we hear more, we'll keep you posted. Um, but certainly if it's something you're interested in, please don't hesitate to reach out to Representative Judkins and let her know. Um, and on um, and one, one other thing, um, as I, I foreshadowed in our budget presentation, uh, Representative Ward um, is actually looking at a bill that would um, uh, essentially get dedicated funding for the waiting list every year. So he would hope to move 200 people off every year. Um, that would go in the base budget so that it would be something that every year 200 people would be funded off the waiting list um, and that would continue uh, in perpetuity. Um, we've heard a little bit about that, no bill yet that we're aware of, but um, certainly if we hear or see more, we will. Uh, but that is something certainly that people should be reaching out to the Social Services Appropriations Committee and Executive Appropriations Committee about um, to let them know you support uh, uh, you know, waiting, dedicated waiting list funding. So again, two bills, we don't have any language yet, but we'll keep an eye out for and we'll keep you posted on those moving forward. So uh, as you as you can tell, we have uh, no idea 
what went down, but that's at least some some of what's coming up. Um, and with that, I'm I'm Andrew. He's Nate, and uh, we'll see you next week. Out. Thanks. Thanks.